Every great AI image really comes down to one thing, the model you use. And with how fast AI is moving, there are now hundreds of them, which is why most people still aren't getting the results they should be getting. So I spent the last few weeks testing every major model that's available right now, breaking down how each one works, comparing their outputs side by side, and figuring out which ones actually hold up going into 2026. I narrowed it down to the five models that consistently perform the best. And in this video, I'm going to show you those five models, run each of them with the exact same prompts, and walk you through how to use them properly so you can see for yourself which one fits your style, workflow, and the results you want. Plus, I'll show you one tool that lets you access all of these models in one place, along with every other major model you might want to test next. To access all those models, we'll be using the tool called OpenArt. I've left a link to it in the description below. I love using OpenArt because it has all of the image models you could possibly need in one place. And whenever a new model gets released, it gets added instantly, so you never really have to switch between different sites or keep track of which tool supports what. It's all just there every time you log in. So when you first log into OpenArt, you want to head over to the image section on the left right here and then select create image. It opens up this whole workflow for image generation. The next thing we need to do before we actually start generating anything is choose our model. So you want to click this little switch button right here and now you can see there's a ton of different models you can pick between. But the first model we're going to put to the test today is Nano Banana made by Google. Nano Banana is made for people who want a lot more control, not just basic generating, but also editing and all kinds of adjustments. One of the key things this model is also really good at is text inside images and it has really strong consistency when it comes to camera angles, clothing changes and pretty much any variation you can think of. Before we start generating anything, I want to quickly run you through how the settings work. So at the top right here, this is where you insert your prompt. Right under that, you have the image guidance section. This is where you would insert any images you want to change. And then finally, you have a few other settings like the resolution. With the pro version of Nano Banana, you can select the quality all the way up to 4K, which is super nice if you need the extra detail. And for the output settings, you can just choose whatever size you want your final image to be. For this one, I'm gonna go with widescreen for the resolution as well as 4K quality. And now let's insert our universal prompt that we're going to be testing with each one of the models today. So for this, I'm going with cinematic moment of a rescue worker standing on a rocky shoreline during a violent storm, waves crashing behind them as they signal towards a distant helicopter, rain blasting sideways, dark backlight through the storm clouds. This prompt basically gives us everything we need, the depth, realism, lighting, and texture. So we'll clearly be able to see how each model performs. I'll paste the prompt inside the prompt window. And right here, we also have this button for auto enhance. This is actually one of the coolest features in OpenArt because it automatically enhances your prompt and makes sure it fits the model you're using. But since we want the prompt to stay consistent across all of the models, I'm not going to use auto enhance right now. Now I'll just select the number of images I want to generate and click create. And here we can clearly see that Nano Banana is now much more than just an editing tool. The result we got back looks amazing. The realism of the waves is super good. The person in the image actually looks realistic. All the textures are sharp and the whole image looks really consistent and lifelike. But to really test where Nano Banana shines, we need to do some editing. So I'm gonna use one of the images we got from this prompt. Here I'll click on the image guidance section, click history and upload the image I want to edit. And here's another good thing about Nano Banana, the simple prompting. Nano Banana is really good at understanding your prompts without them needing to be very complicated. So to show you what I mean, I'm just gonna write, turn the man so that his face is visible and then I'll click create. In just a matter of seconds, we get back a new image where this person is now realistically turned towards us without anything looking weird or morphed. Everything from his feet to the way his body is rotated looks natural and consistent with how someone would actually look if they turned around. Now to test it out even more, I'll upload this new image again and this time I'll write, make the weather calm and sunny, click create. And it is actually incredible how much this transforms the image. We went from this dramatic rescue shot of someone stranded in a storm to just a calm, bright, almost peaceful image of a man signaling toward a helicopter. And this is exactly why I love using Nano Banana so much. It's super consistent, it's fast, and it just understands what you want without fighting you on the prompt. All right, so next up, let's test another model that's just as good, if not even better, at generating images from scratch, which is Sea Dream 4.0 by ByteDance. What I personally love about Sea Dream is just how versatile this model is. You can honestly think of it as a jack of all trades. It's good for almost anything you throw at it, and that's why it has consistently been held up as a really strong contender in the AI image generator space. Now, another thing that makes it really good is the speed. It's fast, it gives you HD results, similar to what we saw from Nano Banana. 
and it also has really solid consistency when it comes to handling references and sticking closely to your prompt. So with all that being said, let's switch over to Seadream, which is really easy to do here inside OpenArt, and then let's paste in our universal prompt for this model. We're again going with our rescuer scene, so I'll paste the prompt right over here. I'm going with 4K here, and then I'll click Create. Now before we jump into the actual review of the output, I want to point out something really important, and that is the price. Right now, Seadream is four times cheaper than the previous model we tested, which is Nano Banana. And honestly, sometimes price is a huge deciding factor, especially when you're generating a lot of images or working on multiple projects every day. So I think that's definitely worth keeping in mind as we compare the outputs. So let's test it out now. The image we got back honestly looks better to me. I'm not saying that because of one specific thing. It's more the overall look. Everything just looks a tiny bit better. If you look at the stones here, you can see these really pleasant reflections from the sun coming through the clouds. The way the helicopter is positioned also looks a little more natural to me. It matches how I would imagine this whole environment would actually look. And overall, the whole composition just feels more pleasant and more believable. And so with that being said, let's test out the versatility of this model by giving it something completely different. For this one, I wanna use this prompt right here, a shot of a model wearing futuristic ice crystal makeup with cold blue lighting, sharp reflections, frost textures on the skin, and a clean fashion editorial style. So this is a very different type of prompt compared to the rescue scene. I'll set the resolution to 4K again and click create. This image is also really, really good. The texture on the model's skin is extremely well done. Even though she's clearly a model, you can still see the natural skin texture underneath, which is something a lot of models struggle with. The frost elements are done at a very high level as well. So the attention to detail with Seadream is really impressive. So if I were to compare the first two models, I would say that Seadream is the one I'd go with as my main model for generating an image from scratch, while Nano Banana is the one I'd choose for editing images. Now that we've tested both industry giants, let's check out a model that in my opinion, gets a little bit too little attention, even though it is exceptionally good. It has some of the best reasoning and context understanding I've seen. And that model is called Hanyuan Image 3. Now what's really good about Hanyuan is that it does incredibly well with really detailed long prompts, and it's also fully open source, which means there are no restrictions on who can use it. And it works well for artistic styles. So everything from oil paintings to anime to more 3D style designs. But for now, let's stick to our universal prompt. I'm just gonna paste this in right here. This one actually has a little bit more settings than you're probably used to, like the seed and the step count. The step count basically controls how long the AI keeps running before it finalizes the image. And usually the higher the step count, the better it does up to a certain point. And then you also have the seed, which is the number that determines the initial noise. So using the same seed usually generates a similar style of image. So let's go ahead and generate our prompt and take a look at the result. This one definitely leans more towards something drawn or stylized rather than fully realistic. You can see that the person is facing kind of a different direction compared to the helicopter. And the helicopter itself doesn't really look that real. And overall, it just gives me more of that poster style aesthetic instead of something that's truly realistic. So let's actually test out the artistic abilities of Hunyuan. Since it's really good at supporting long prompts, that's exactly what I'm gonna give it. What I have in mind is this fantasy scene with a very rich environment description. So here I'm going for a crystal cavern theme that's lit by the crystals and fungi around it. Feel free to pause the video and read the prompt. I'm going really descriptive here. I'll switch the ratio to three to four, and this is the result we get back. It's a really cool image that honestly looks like a poster or a piece of concept art made by a designer. This model is really good if you're looking for those artistic images that look like someone actually drew them or rendered them. But now let's move to the completely opposite side of the spectrum, from something artistic to one of the most realistic models for generating people and faces. And this one is definitely a weird one because we're not actually using any of the industry giants or one of the tools everyone always talks about. This model is actually made by OpenArt themselves. The reason they made this model is because they have a tool called characters, where you can train an AI model on the look of a certain person, and then the AI will consistently give you results that look like that person. So having a model that is really good at creating realistic human faces is extremely valuable for that. So let's switch over to OpenArt Photorealistic, select our universal prompt and paste it in. This actually looks like something that was just taken on a phone, like someone just pulled out their iPhone and snapped a picture. It doesn't have any of the overly dramatic lighting that some other models add. It doesn't have surreal elements or anything stylized. It just looks like a casual photo taken by someone in the real world. That's exactly why this model was made. You can see the water looks super realistic, the wet stones also look very natural, and the person himself is even waving toward the helicopter in a very believable way. That's the theme here. You're not getting that fake 3D doll-like look. You're getting something that's grounded and realistic. 
So let's test it out with another prompt. This time I want to go with a close-up face portrait of a Tokyo traveler with raindrops on their jacket, soft lighting in the background, natural skin texture. So I'll type that in and click create. And here we're getting something really similar again. It's a super high quality image of a person that looks incredibly realistic to the point where you would honestly never guess this was made by AI. All right, so by now we've checked out all the realistic models and even some of the more artistic ones. But what we haven't looked at yet are the models that are specifically made for really good graphic design outputs. And that's exactly what we're going to take a look at next with a model called Audiogram V3. This is a model I selected specifically for people who are looking to create posters, covers, thumbnails, quote cards, or anything else in a graphic design niche. So with that in mind, let's switch over to Ideogram V3, paste in our universal prompt, click create, and check out the results. You can clearly see the model is trying to make it realistic, but the overall image just doesn't look up to par, especially coming from Sea Dream, Nano Banana, and the open art realistic model. Here, we're missing the depth of field, and the overall look is just a lot more drawn than realistic but that's actually not a bad thing because most of the time when you're using this model, you're not gonna be creating something realistic anyway. You're trying to create something you can either use as a starting point or even a fully finished graphically designed image. So to test this out properly, I'm gonna go ahead and design a poster. For this one, I'm going with this prompt right here. Design a vertical poster of a Tokyo traveler under the rain with bold headline text, lost in Tokyo, smaller subtle text, a night in the neon city, clean layout, strong typography, ready for print. And here you can see just how well this turns out. The images look really cool. I think this model works perfectly if you're a graphic designer who does this for a living and you need to create a quick mock-up of something you need. And overall, this is a strong image generator for anything that has to do with graphic design. So now you know the exact image generators you should be using in 2026. And knowing all those models means that whenever you're stuck on an edit or you need to generate something totally from scratch or you suddenly need a poster or a thumbnail, you instantly know which model to go for without having to waste hours testing out a ton of different things. And this is also why I love using OpenArt because everything we just tested lives inside one platform. You don't need to jump between different websites and you don't need to have five different subscriptions and overpay for models that should honestly cost way less. You just open up the tool, pick your model, and you're ready to go. So if you wanna go ahead and start using all of these image generators for yourself, go ahead and sign up to OpenArt using my link down in the description below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.